everybody, how's it going? Welcome to TSMU. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm from Lenovo. I work at Lenovo Legion as the community manager. And today we're doing another TSM Q&A series. So welcome, everybody. Uh, again, I, I work at Lenovo. I actually interviewed Christian before on the Lenovo channel, and now we're on the TSMU channel. So excited to do this tonight. Uh, and we're, we're joined, like I said, by Christian Lee. We're from TSM. Christian, how's it going, man? How are you? How are you doing, Ben? It's so good to see you again. <laughs> For everyone, again, like Ben mentioned, y'all don't know this, but we already pre acquainted best friends, basically. And then, <laughs> but we've jumped on before. I'm, it's actually funny how things go full circle. Super happy to be here with you on TSMU, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm super excited too. Um, so for this Q&A, guys, we'll be pulling questions from the TSMU Discord. Uh, so if you have a question for us, be sure to head to that Discord in the chat at discord.gg slash TSMU. You can ask your question in the Ask Stream Questions here channel. And then once you've asked, uh, join the waiting room voice channel if you want to join us on the show for the voice chat side of things. So that's the plan of how this will work out. Uh, while people are starting to get their questions in, Christian, do you want to let us know a little bit about yourself and your own role at TSM and kind of what you do there? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Christian. I'm the global sales executive for TSM. Um, basically, I'm responsible for outreaching and bringing in uh, new brand partnerships and sponsorships, uh, sponsorship opportunities. Um, so basically, you know, part of that entails, you know, creating new sales assets that we go to market with, really working and identifying and solidifying our process that we go into. Um, how do we outreach? Who's the right companies who might be looking for who is a good contact to go to uh, and really just building a lot of the sales materials that we go with. Um, I'm very sales oriented, very extroverted. I'm always on the front lines. Um, essentially, my job is talking, uh, just talking to as many brands as possible um, and and just, you know, having uh, having a lot of conversations and meeting a lot of people and building new relationships. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that intro. How long have you actually been with TSM? I'm coming up to two years. Wow. Um, yeah, kind of crazy. It really just hit by and fl uh, and hit me. I think I joined um, obviously pre-COVID <laughs> in like December, and then all of a sudden, I think it's it was it was already weird on the marks where there was a time where I was like, man, I have been away from the office longer than I was in the yeah. office, and here we are, September eighth, two thousand twenty-one, <laughs> and I'm still not in the office here and there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's like exactly when I joined Lenovo and I have the exact same experience. Like I've spent more time working remote than in the office at this point, which is crazy for us. So yeah, it's so Just weird. The, I mean, I think it's weird that we've really adjusted to this. I think yeah, everything's all online the, and digital. Exactly. The new normal. <laughs> yeah. Wild. My Wednesday post work is TSMU. It's no longer happy hours, but that's even better. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> better than we could ask for. <laughs> yep. Yep. Awesome. So I think we have questions rolling in. So I'll go ahead and kick things off then. Uh, the first question comes from Beard. I like that name quite a lot. Uh, he says, As, has Steph Curry sent you a signed jersey yet? Uh, and also, what kind of sales jobs did you do prior to this? If you can answer. So two questions yeah. there. Absolutely. I assume it's from my, my little bio. I'm a huge Warriors and Giants fanboy, so I'm sure that's alluding to that. <laughs> I do too like your name, even though I'm stroking this imaginary beard that is non-existent <laughs> tier. Uh, Steph has not sent me a signed jersey. You know, we're best friends. I have him his numbers. He's, he's just trolling me at this point. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, Steph, I mean, Steph is obviously really close to our, our, our organization as one of our investors and um, a really, just a really big TSM fan in general. Um, he sent a jersey to Wardell. I don't know if, if the fans out here have seen that really cool little call out that he did. I was really just dang, really proud of that one. I personally have not got one. If I have one personally signed to me, hint, hint, I would probably just, die and retire right away because i at that point i had ready made it um <laughs> so unfortunately i'm waiting for it hopefully i'm the next in line over at tsm uh and in terms of what kind of sales jobs i did prior so actually this is my first technical sales role sales position um i was actually an assistant media planner over at omd working on the advertising agency side um so i i worked on what the levi's and dockers accounts um and just to give people a little bit of explanation on what that exactly means essentially i'm representing in that case levi's or or, or uh, levi's or dockers as as uh, one of their agencies going out and building a digital portfolio uh, digital advertising portfolio for them essentially picking and choosing what media outlets um that 
that you know they, we put the advertisements on there. Uh, from there, I actually joined the flip side, and now I'm selling media assets, or I guess in this sort of sports uh, esports partnerships and sponsorships um, for TSM. Um, previously, before the global executive role, I was actually a sales coordinator. Um, so it was really on that support side, you know, maintaining documents, um, you know, coming, uh, you know, really helping out with like the the tools and ammo that the sales team would go to market with. Um, I actually got promoted um, a few months ago uh, back in March and, and now on the full front lines of uh, being that sales executive. Um, so, you know, no previous sales roles, I would say, but the one directly prior was a sales coordinator, which is that support style to clarify. Gotcha. Yeah, it's super interesting to hear your career and kind of how you ended up at TSM. I think that's probably something a lot of people wonder is how to break into the esports side specifically, even from a non-gaming background. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to yeah. hear kind of your journey there. Yeah, and on that note, um, I am one of those notes. Some people you really meet that have just been in love with esports and enamored and just from video games at the beginning. You actually meet also a lot of people who are professionals who we really needed to know that they can do the job and then that's how they jumped on board. I'm on the flip side where I've been playing games since I was literally just born and out of the womb playing Halo and 64. <laughs> it's at a 64 out of that. Um, but, you know, I've been actually a TSM fan since I was about 14 years old. I had the original F at Bay Life shirt with the paint splatter. Um, and I proudly wear, wore that on my first day of the job or on the, on the first week, really. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it came full circle where I've always wanted to be in esports, and um, I reached out to the right person at the right time. And it's just kind of one of those dream stories, Fantasy Island, that I somehow made it to my perfect, perfect dream job. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've just been a TSM fan since day one, so it's kind of crazy to be full <laughs> circle here. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. And I'm working for that kind of company, right? You've been following it for so long. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Ben, honestly, every day is so weird because I feel like it's a mix of fanboying and people make fun of me because I will literally be like, Emma, are you, do you work here or are you just a fan who sneaks, snuck in? It's too part. <laughs> I think everyone's secretly a fan. I feel like you have to be to an extent. <laughs> uh, okay, so next question comes from Galaxy, another cool name. Galaxy says, has there ever been a brand you wanted to collab with but couldn't do due to other reasons? So mm -hmm. any story there maybe? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of brands that I would really love to work with. Um, I think, you know, the thing about sales is we literally look at categories and trying to identify who makes sense, what makes sense. And then from there, kind of trickling down, okay, from that category, what companies are, are the top dogs or the top spenders in that area? And then, you know, what companies, uh, you know, would make most sense for TSM? In addition, who, what contacts, um, you know, what, what contacts are the best to go at to? Do you have mutual contacts that you already talked to for something prior um, so in short you know I, I i would say there's definitely a lot of categories out there you know personally i'm a huge hype slash fashion um i love just sh the shoe game if we could jump into a conversation with jordan and nike you know i'm right there immediately and i this is something that we're definitely exploring and looking at the, at the areas uh in terms of you know for couldn't you know for other reasons Sometimes it doesn't work out, right? Sometimes it's just the budget. They just don't have the budget, right? And here's the thing about TSM. We're such a, you know, premier and the top esport league that obviously that if you want to jump into esports and you want to have, you know, be part of this incredible organization with this entire huge fan base with products that are incredible like TSMU, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need a little bit of the cash to be able to support that. So unfortunately, some of the brands, you know, um, you know, might not necessarily have that funds, but, you know, there's certainly ways that we can work around and work with budgets. Um, it de does definitely doesn't necessarily c close off certain categories. Um, other ways are, you know, if we're already partnering with, uh, you know, exclusive partners in some categories, we might not be able to outreach to um, another company in that same level um, that, you know, let's say like if you're right, right, we're exclusive with automobiles with GM, can't go reach out to, you know, Porsche or Ferrari tomorrow or whatnot or, or work with them tomorrow. Um, and I think it's just about navigating those lines. And part of sales is also understanding that the category is a lot of um, has a lot of butter to it. So uh, making sure you can really walk the lines and be able to open yourself to partner with as much of people as possible. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Like you said, TSM has really built out quite a I'd say pretty impressive roster of sponsorship at this point. And so you want to kind of keep that consistent, right? And imagine going forward. And so certain brands, you kind of have to like you almost measure up against what's already on the table, right? Yep. Yep. No, that's absolutely it. And we, as the best esports team, 
going to say it, not biased. We we have the best partners, right? We got Lenovo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that enough is ready to say, hey, if you want to be on the name, like the likelihood of Lenovo or Logitech or, you know, GM or whatnot, then, you know, you, you we look for the best premium brands as well. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I agree with you on the uh, the best esport org. Not biased at all over here either. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. This is not TSMU. This is esport U. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so our next question, you kind of covered this already a little bit, um, but what is your background in? And if, it, you know, the career is one part of it too, but you mentioned you've been playing games forever yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think some of that could be cool to hear about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so actually growing up, my dad used to work for NVIDIA um, and I was basically born and bred right into it. Um, I did product testing for them, um, you know, as actually fun little note, I don't know if anyone knows this product. It's a small thing. It was a 3D, the NVIDIA 3D glasses. The bridge of that nose is actually based on my nose. No one probably knows what that <laughs> product is, but it was one of the things was like 3D glasses. At the time, was really intricate because you could pop the pop them into, depending on obviously monitors that are, uh, you know, compatible, uh, but play any game in 3D, right? Well, the 3D games in general. So uh, that has my bridge to it. I don't even know where that story came from. I just thought it was cool, weird flex. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, again, I've been playing games my entire life. I've been playing League of Legends since I was about 14, obviously from season one. Um, you know, played StarCraft. Uh, fun fact, lost to Idra in the first round of a, a little fan tournament in the very early, early, early days in like two minutes. Um, and, you know, I played, grew up playing Smash and, and just the whole roster of sports, of esports. Um, and, you know, I think coming from me, uh, when you are fully in love and fully immersed in something, I think that's when you kind of realize, like, if this is, this is in a job for me, you know what I mean? This is my absolute passion. And so it just kind of easily lined up and honestly, with a little bit of a luck, um, I lined up to sync up my passion and my job hand in hand. Yeah. I mean, again, I, it kind of sounds like my story as well. I think just it, like you said, once you've been doing that forever, it seems like a natural way to go. Mm -hmm. If you can make that into a career and then it, it just feels like so lucky to be able to work in that kind of space. So just cool to hear back on that too. And even the, the NVIDIA story is really interesting. I think most people probably can't say that they have part of a product based on something they had a part in physically. So <laughs> if I were to <laughs> die tomorrow, Ben, you know, that's going to be on my tombstone. <laughs> All right. Was the bridge nose on a product that is no longer being sold. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. <laughs> um, okay. So moving on to our next question. So again, you kind of touched on this, but like what specifically made you want to work at TSM um, mm -hmm. and also just in esports in general versus, you know, gaming or even NVIDIA stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, not to, you know, to move on from just the fact that, again, I've been a diehard TSM fan since day one and seeing Andy on my screen to all of a sudden being interviewed by Andy was just was such a <laughs> surreal moment to me. And now he's my boss that I work with him quite frequently is 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 crazy to me. Um, but I think the other note of it is just be there's something amazing about knowing that you're the industry leader, right? Knowing that anything that you're working on th today is going to be the it could be the slash probably high chance that it will be the industry standard tomorrow and stuff that i'm working on now and the partnerships that we make now is really carving the way for all of esports um i'm on a sales team of of really you know two salesmen and a total of three with you know partnerships team you're we're looking at like eight or eight eight or so um but i, I it, it's really cool that something that i could be thinking of at 2 a.m could all of a sudden come live two months later, and then all of a sudden we see other teams trickle down. Um, it's just the power of just our brand and understanding how much TSM has really done for this community. And honestly, this industry is awesome because I think for me, it's just, it feels like I literally have an impact on what's, you know, what I grew up loving. All these ideas that would spark in my head when I was 12 years old or 10 years old, all the way to college coming up with projects, you know, um, you know, the little spite at, hey, you gave me a C on this, prof, I just made this a thing. Is really, you know what I mean? There was just this element of just like wow like i'm at tsm you know what i mean like this is this is the time where all of my childhood ideas can put pen to paper work on it from a you know sales angle that the experience comes and you kind of learn how that really could play out um and just throw ideas on the wall and i think there's just something about you know going to sleep at night and I, just being like man, I made it, you know, this is crazy. <laughs> There's still so much work to do and so much that I want to add and so much left to do for that I have internally that I want to do for this industry. And knowing that I can do that at TSM is just, it just means the world to me and it's an absolute dream. 
Yeah, I mean, that's super cool to hear. I think if you look at the stuff that TSM and just esports teams are doing as a whole, I mean, esports team as a concept are so new in general, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't even a job 10, 20 years ago, really. Yeah. Um, and so that, in addition to the, just the crazy stuff that you can do in terms of content and partnerships, like you said, it seems like mm -hmm. if you want to, if you're a creative person, it seems like the kind of job that would really work well for that, for letting you actually pursue ideas, not just do things that have been set for years. A hundred percent. And TSMU is a really great call out to that. Like, honestly, like it's just started out with an idea, um, you know, from a product angle from Ali. And then all of a sudden it just truly came to fruition. Next thing you know, it's one of it's the, the premier program of its kind. Um, and I think something, another angle at TSM is really just the fact that if you want to work on something, you can go work on it. Like, yes, TSM is one of the biggest. Yes, we're the most valued. I could give you the whole sales pitch. I do it every day. But there's also this element of that startup feel where like, you know what I mean? If you're walking at the water cooler, well, pre-COVID when I used to walk by a water cooler, um, I, I would talk to different teams and I would be like, hey, like, I love apparel. I love merchandise. If you ever just need help on it, like, can I do it? Can I help you with it? And they would say yes, and we work and collaborate. Like I'm, I joke because I, you know, I could probably do a better job now with COVID and all. But I used to be the quote unquote TSM welcome committee, where if anyone knew one, I wanted to talk to them right away because I was just like, hey, I love this so much that if you ever need extra help on it, whether from a sales angle or for just like, you know, just like a, 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 you just need extra hands on it, I'm more than happy to. Um, which is what I love about TSM. It's this feeling that you know, though we're the industry leaders, you can. It's really a place where you can do what you want to do and what and create what you want to create. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's. I mean, as a fellow creative person, I think that's so important to have that freedom, right, and not just be locked into doing something. So mm -hmm. that's really cool to hear that that story there. Um, okay, our next question is. How did you, so you talked a little bit about your career coming into TSM. And again, I think a lot of people probably have an experience that they're not working in gaming yet, but want to be in some capacity in esports mm -hmm. or, you know, any other gaming org. So how did you kind of translate your background into a job specifically in esports? And then do you yeah. have any kind of recommendations for people who want to do that same path? 100% network and really just get out to as much as people and, and talk to as much people. I'm honestly sure that everyone has, you know, who've seen these Q and A's week to week, you're going to hear that all the time, but that's just because of how true it is. Personally, you know, LinkedIn became very available, uh, available to us, especially like in our generation in the last few years. Um, and so what happened was, you know, I was sitting there working on khakis for the billionth day and I was just like, you know, I did not <laughs> grow up thinking that I'd be, and hey, if you love khakis, that's amazing. But like for me, you know, I was just like, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I, I was on the media planning side. And so one thing that happens is the clients take you out and like to schmooze you. Um, and like what happens is you go to nice dinners and you get a little cool, fun activations. You make custom jackets. And I love that. But I also love the fact that the, the person sitting on the other side of the table, all of my sales rep, I would make their job so easy for them. Because all, I mean, you could tell, I just like to talk. So during the whole conversation, conversations i'm like i'm having a great time we're just having nice dinners and just talking about you know you know just meeting people and having building relationships through a business angle and one day i was walking to the car with one of our pro, uh, with one of my sales reps at the time at omd and they were like christian you're sitting up the wrong side of the table like you should make you know what i mean like you're you're too good at talking and and communicating and networking and do that so I reached out, you know, I think I sat really, I honestly I took that to heart. Um, Stephanie Valentine, thank you so much for that conversation because that really sparked, I guess, that, that the passion is like, hey, everything I've always wanted to do, this is the time. So I went on LinkedIn and I actually reached out to Jocelyn. I'm throwing shout outs on shout outs, I'm sorry, but I, there's just so much people that I owe my career to. Um, so Jocelyn, who's one of the direct, uh, senior directors over at Icon at the time was working with TSM and I reached out. Uh, and I honestly, you, here's the thing. If you ever feel scared of reaching out, cause you don't know if they're going to say no, or you don't think you're ready or whatnot. The worst thing that happens is they say no, or they just don't even respond in which is the same result as if you never messaged in the first place. So I reached out and I wasn't one of those types where it wasn't one of those messages like, Hey, how you doing? Right? No, like get to the point, provide value. And I really was like, Hey, my name is Christian. I've been obsessed with esports since day one. Um, here are some ideas. I provided a portfolio that I've already come up with marketing ideas, perhaps from college, any works that I just thought of. I think there was one in my our portfolio that I just did at like 2 a.m., crafted it out and worked out and it ended up really looking good. 
Um, and, um, you know, I said, hey, this is exactly the type of work that I could do for TSM. This is what I'm capable of if you hire me or if you have that conversation with me. You know what I mean? Can I talk to you about what your day to day is? Um, you know, if there's, if you feel like there's room for there. And then Jocelyn said, right next thing you know, I'm talking to HR and it just, it, it just blew my mind. I'm in the interview process and I'm exactly doing that. I think it's about showing what you're capable of doing, the yeah, creative ideas that you have already come up with and maybe, you know, crafting it so it's not so copy and paste, right? And and putting a little bit of spin, spin on TSM, right? Um, for me, it just happened that because I lived and breathed TSM since I was like 14 years old, it was super easy for me to just really um, kind of craft how my current ideas could work with them. Because honestly, when I was coming up with the ideas, I pretty much had TSM in mind, right? Um, so that's a really long winded answer to just say, jump on LinkedIn, find mm -hmm. the right people that of who you aspire to work under, or honestly have that job and really just have that open conversations. Tell them, this is what I can do. Let's jump on a call, right? Not like, Hey, how are you doing? Can you chat? Right. If they see, if they see like, oh my gosh, this kid like really wants it or they really want to work with them. You know what I mean? They'll be way more willing to hit reply. Right. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that's. I feel like that's something probably people don't do a lot of is actually reaching out mm -hmm. uh, versus just applying for a job, something like that, and just taking mm -hmm. that initiative. And I, mm -hmm. I imagine there's a lot of hesitancy around that and people being unsure of how to do it. I think you explained it pretty well, of having a portfolio, right? And showing it really creating value for that brand in some way. I think, do you feel like it's more important to just put more effort into a few of those or really like, did you reach out to a lot of people or only, you know, the ones you're really most passionate about when you were doing that? So I got lucky. I was ready to send one out to every single team. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just start with my favorite, right? I got insanely lucky. It was a timing where TSM really wanted to hire and they did it. And pro tip, TSM really wants to hire. By the way, guys, you heard it here first at TSU. But um, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things that it just the timing worked out. But I had... I, ha I was ready to just send it to every esport organization. I was ready to send it to esport journalism, small ones, small teams, big ones, whatever it was. Um, again, I just lucked out and, and to find my exact perfect role. Um, but yes, I would say really spend time to craft out your idea and really spend time to be valuable because just like a resume, you know what I mean? It's even less of a chance that they're going to pull it up and really spend that much time to look at it. So if you have some really killer ones on your first example of your first project, that just makes it so much easier for them to continue reading on the second and third and then following up with a call and really just walking through it. Um, but I, I, again, I, I would recommend the shotgun approach um, where, <laughs> you know what I mean? Shoot it out to anyone you seem fit or anywhere is of interest just to have that conversation. Because again, worst comes to worst is they don't respond or you take the call and you realize, hey, this one maybe isn't for me, but at least you know. I'm very much someone who ha who likes to know like what my entire hand is before playing it on the field, right? Like yeah. I need to know what my possibility are. What can I, the, the what if just kills me. Like I, <laughs> I need to know like, okay, at least I know I gave it a shot. Um, and look, I, I, I completely know that I'm saying this full, full heartedly as an, a, an extreme extrovert, if you will, or whatnot. And I understand that it could be tough, especially for my introverts out there. And, and I, I, it just takes a lot of practice and you feel a lot comfortable um, especially in a role with sales, where again, your job is very much talking and outreaching for brands. And I, I get used to saying, I had to get used to saying, getting used to being told no so many, like pretty early in my <laughs> career, right? So especially for if you're achieving to be a sales, like executive or being on the front lines, you have to get comfortable and you have to show that you can outreach. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think um, my main question was kind of like the quality versus quantity piece mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, if, if you're in that position, like you have to wait the time to, to reach out to these places versus just really spending a lot of time on specific ones, you know, versus the shotgun, like you said, sounds like in your case, you spent extra time on TSM um, because that was the one you're most excited for and, but you were ready to, to shotgun at the same time. So yeah. I think that strategy makes sense. Yeah, sorry. And to clarify, shotgun, but with quality bullets. <laughs> Not, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, you, like, yes, you don't just copy paste all of your outreach. I, I think I found my least successful outreach from a brand perspective is when I'm just templating, right? I really right. spend each time, but I think that just really shows the amount of effort that's required, right? You mm -hmm. need to do dozens of them, and each one has to be pretty nicely well written yeah. if you want a response. Exactly, you know? which I think is the tough balance, but it's cool to hear your own experience there. Like you said, you got pretty fortunate, I think, with one of your first ones. But th that mentality, I think, is very helpful if you're looking for that kind of career path. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, OK, so our next question is more specifically around sales. This is mm -hmm. 
for someone who's interested in working in sales, kind of in your position, uh, what kind of skills do you th would you recommend that they improve to kind of best prepare for that kind of role going into it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, communication is absolutely crucial. You have to be able to one, be comfortable talking and networking and building relationships, but two, being able to take what they have told you in response. So if I had an overview conversation explaining what TSM is, I have to speak it very clearly so they completely understand who they're talking to and why you're bothering them, right? Um, and then two, uh, would definitely be clear, uh, uh, would be creativity. Um, I think one thing that's really helped me shine out, especially at TSM is my passion really shows through my creativity. Like I, like if during our brainstorm sessions, what typically happens is you go talk to a brand and if they're really interested, they want you to pitch, you have to come internally. Okay. How can, how, as uh, how can TSM co create up with amazing, cool assets and partnerships that would really excite them, right? Yes. A lot of it is coming over to content. Yes. A lot of it come going into getting creative ideas from anyone. But if you have like a chock full ready and like, oh, I'm ready for this. Like and you spit it out. It just helps you shine. You know what I mean? Like, especially if those ideas end up coming live, you know what I mean? That's like, wow, I, I did hit the nail on the head on that one. It feels really good. Um, so, you know, I, I know creativity is a little hard to say, hey, work on your creativity. But I think part of those measurements are really, you know, be educated in what other teams are doing, you know, take inspiration from real life, right? Like, honestly, like some, even there's a creative angle from just even outreaching to the people I talk to, right, is really, I one day I was walking, downstairs and i saw my roommate have a calvin klein shirt sometimes that sparks an information like calvin klein all right let's look up what they're doing oh my gosh they're spending a lot here they're spending a lot here stuff like that and so sometimes creativity can come in multiple angles and not just the assets that you come up with um with that said i think that a lot of times that's how a lot of it shows right and if you're if even if you're not currently working or if you're in school right now if you come up with idea just like watching tsm on lcs or watching c9 or whatever team you're you've been watching or whatever you know Craft that, that craft that idea on work on you know work on how that could come to life and what that could do for a particular brand. You can honestly insert any brand you want, right? And you can use that as a job, kind of reaching out to as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say definitely that, and then communication. And again, on that lines, you're going to need to start working with internal stakeholders and making sure you're being clear on what those ideas are and how you know what would be needed. What do we need from other teams? Um, I would say those are the big ones. Um, definitely networking. Um, I think it's kind of similar in nature, but being comfortable, you know, turning an any day conversation or walking around at Disneyland on a Saturday into a business conversation, right? Get being ready for a two, hitting people with a two minute elevator pitch. If you're literally an elevator in Vegas and you just happen <laughs> to run with the C, run into the CEO of Twitter or it's the CEO of Nike, right? Like I think it's it's one of the that's a definitely an extra piece that you kind of have to be ready for. <laughs> Yeah, that that second one, I know creativity is its own beast to try and improve, but that second elevator pitch one, I mean, do you have an experience of getting good at doing that? Was it just the matter of talking to a lot of people and practicing? Talking to a lot of people and talking to the mirror, you know? <laughs> it really is. It's it's present and that also adds to another one, which is presentations, right? We do so many pitches. Um, and one thing that helped me stand out as when I was a sales coordinator was being the go-to person to build those pitches and presentations. It was a natural funnel to be like, Hey, if this kid's already being the person to do it, why don't we make him make it his full-time job or, or part of the job and, and now speak on it? Cause it's a lot easier to speak on something when you create it yourself. Um, and all of a sudden I just became the person to go to from any department to go build a presentation. Um, now we've increased our team and it's, I've been lucky that there's a lot of people, more people out there to help out with bandwidth. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's just a lot of practice talking to the mirror. And after I was really bad, like in the first few presentations and I was super nervous. I was like, oh my God, if I don't land this pitch, I'm fired. I'm done. Why am I here? <laughs> right. I'm really hard on myself. But then after a while, I kind of got natural with it, got comfortable with it. And now, honestly, if you ask me to talk about a certain subject, I can probably pull up a deck on it and talk about it for the next 40 minutes. Right. And I think it's just a practice, practice, practice. Um, talk to your mom about it, talk to your dog, talk to your mirror, you know, and this works the same for interviews, right? It's just a concept that, that is really flexible for, you know, anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the practice piece of it too. I mean, like you said, interviews, even stuff like this is kind of the same way. Um, but just cool to hear kind of how you practice that, because I know for myself, I, I mean, I'll be the same boat. I'd be very scared to do that kind of thing to start with. And I think it's just like creating content almost like you just got to get out there and practice it and, and just get more comfortable. So that's really cool yeah. to hear that experience there. 
No, and the sentiment there, honestly, even like to this, like there was a big difference between a sales pitch and this conversation. We had a conversation <laughs> pre-stream, Ben, where it was just like, I remember, so I don't know if you guys have seen me earlier in a couple of the other TSMU episodes I've hosted, but I was pretty cocky. I was like, ah, I talk for a living. I can do this. My first show, I was like so nervous. I was just like, what is going on? Why am I so, like, I, you know, and then it just, you, you really take a step back and you see what, um, you know, I, I, for one, the Prior to that, my first experience in this was your show, Ben, or Lenovo, and I was so in awe. I was like, this guy kills it. And I had the same questions. How is he doing it, right? And, you know, after a while, you realize, well, maybe it is practice. Maybe we should give that a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it is just doing it a lot of time. So, I mean, we can swap jobs and just, you know, slowly you'll get better at doing streaming and I'll do better at uh, doing sales, I guess. Try that out. Let's uh, <laughs> let's become the perfect worker here, Ben. I see a collaboration. This yeah, is a exactly. real life duo queue, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's awesome. Um, I did want to say, because we're at the halfway mark here, so remember, you guys can ask questions during this event. If you want to uh, ask them to Christian in the Discord, just make sure you go into the TSMU Discord uh, and ask in the stream questions channel if you want to get your question answered on the rest of the show. So we've got some time for that. Moving on here through some more of our questions. Uh, next question is, for collegiate club leaders out there, are there any general sales deck tips or advice you have for leaders who want to level up their own sales deck? So mm. you just talked about how good you are at presentations. You have thoughts on doing decks as well? Show, not tell. Illustrate, 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 and craft that narrative, right? So really find out, take a step back, outline who you are as a club and what your identity is, what do you aim for, and 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 really the cool pieces of assets that you help al illustrate that right then spend some time working with a graphic designer i think work on your graphic design skills right um be find a way to paint a picture that isn't just reading off a powerpoint and i'm sure this i mean i, I this pretty much presentation 101 you hear that all the time but you will be surprised how many decks you've seen professionally uh that are just like yo like if you just spent a little bit more time thinking about a better way to show this rather than like 20 sentences right because here's the thing about presentation is it's very similar in, in nature to what i said about resumes where you pull up the presentation and honestly if it's if you bore them in the next two minutes they're going to pull up slack they're going to pull up other work and they're going to work on that stuff and just nod their heads especially from this work from home environment where everything's all digital you have to become really creative of how you do that um so i was lucky where on the opposite side when i was at omd at his media planner i was sitting through a lot of these presentations and i was just like okay i'm blanked out i don't know what happened you know what i mean so hit them with the key points understand your timeline understand the narrative and really understand what the story you are trying to tell because in essence a sales pitch is a story you're trying to explain the business the relate the story of what the e in our eyes the esports industry is um you know i guess what your collegiate goal is and what your club is and and you know you're trying to tell the story of like of why there's cross collaboration between our two industries or two categories or, or, or two partners whoever you want to talk to and then you're trying to tell the story of like okay this is exactly how we run and show and illustrate this amazing partnership, right? These are the assets that I do. And then in the end, in conclusion, these are what you're going to get as a result from it, the key uh, KPIs and, and exactly the delivery and methodology that you're going to be rewarded from this amazing partnership. Um, so if I were to say anything, it's just work on storytelling and work on how you're going to illustrate that story. It's funny. Like I, I've even been in so many presentations as part of Lenovo that are exactly described, just like walls of text, essentially, mm -hmm. instead of trying to tell a story. So I think that's so true. And I, I imagine that's another one that probably comes to practice is creating those decks or those presentations and really learning how to tell that story over time. I mean, I'm sure you have your own stories for how you improve that yourself. Yeah, yeah. It take, take pride in making it look good. You know what I mean? If you can align things on, learn how to use the align button on Google Slides. You know what I mean? Just take the time to really find the small details. Uh, my boss previously, who really trained me into these decks, he really, shout out Luke. Um, he was really like, you know, these details make up every single one. So if I mess it up, he wouldn't even tell me where I mess up. He'd be like, find it. I'm like, ah, oh, and it's been hours and it's just one small little mark. Um, but it ended up making up the whole thing and the whole illustration. Um, for those of you, because you're asking from a college angle, if you have the opportunity to take a graphics design class, take it. It will just make everything look better and make you look more creative. Well, not look, make you more creative. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with that even outside of 
sales. I think mm -hmm. having that design experience it, uh, these days, there's so much content out there. I think just learning that is such a valuable skill to have. So definitely agree there. Uh, okay. Next question. So how would you recommend that collegiate club leaders best sell their club or program to a potential sponsor? So we have the deck Now, how do we actually sell it to the sponsor? Uh, the second part of that is that impressions tend to skew lower. So what advice would you offer on how to still show you can provide value? Mm -hmm. Showing what, like those impressions might be lower, but you have to explain to say why they're different from any given, and it's not exactly one-to-one -to, -one to these bigger media pools that you're looking to. What do you as a club, what's your product differentiator and why should this company care slash why is it more valuable to them? Why is your one audience member worth so much more than a hundred that's just going to scroll through it on another media banner or whatever it is, right? Like maybe it's an education piece. Maybe it's a company that you're talking to that is more specific, tailored to your college, to your audience, to your classes or to whatever you're representing. And you really explain, hey, you know what I mean? Yes, you're looking into the education sector, but my metrics show that we have a complete alignment in um, our, the number of fans, you know, students that we've surveyed that love your brand already, right? And then of X amount of those surveys, 100% of them are, are in this club. You know what I mean? So if that's part of it, it's really about crafting the narrative and really showing a value piece. Sometimes it's not all about the numbers, sometimes it's about the value. I'm gonna say honestly, right now with TSMU when it started up, you know, might not have the biggest because it's right off the start. But every brand that I have talked to loves TSMU. It's a, it's become a crucial piece in all of my sales decks, right? Not because of the number that's attached to it. And trust me, it's growing and bumping up. So soon it'll be just a complete whole. But it's also because of this diversity narrative, the inclusion of the story that everything that I've always, that we've wanted it as esports professionals is here at TSMU, right? It's it's everything that I wish I had as a kid. When you explain it like that and showing how passionate you are and really showing like, hey, this is everything that I wish I had as a kid. We're pathing the path for all of esports. All of our fans are all of our community is all on board it. It just becomes so much more valuable of an impression than just one of a thousand or one of a million that you that other competitors might be promising. Yeah, it's, it's crashing that story, like you said, and even talking about almost like the mission behind mm -hmm. not just the brand, but like the things that you're doing um, to help serve the community or just, you know, create a, a bigger purpose for the brand overall. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Even from Lenovo's side, I'll say like the things we're doing community really line up with you guys are doing at TSMU. And um, I think that's why we're so excited about what TSM's doing with TSMU. So I, it's, it's working for, uh, for Lenovo as well. <laughs> yeah, and th that's a perfect case study. Like, honestly, like when you find a partner that's perfect in every way, like our goals with Lenovo are so similar that it creates products that are similar, but it's not a product as a competitor standpoint. Like we're not competing right. with your show, but we're collaborating. We're working with you. You're the host. I'm the host. We're jumping apart. We're creating a relationship and we're actually showing and illustrating that live on stream to viewers. Yep, exactly. Which is just so cool to be a part of. Um, okay, so our next question is... How do you approach sales pitches? Any advice or strategies that you use going into a pitch? So I, I'm i in the boat where I don't know much about this yeah. world at all. So explain to me for the first time, like how do you start going into that kind of thing? Research, research, research. One, I find out again, okay, so I know this is the person, this is the right person who I talk to. We have a lot of third-party research vendors that we work with. Um, you know, Sponsor United, uh, MVP Index, Nielsen, they really help provide us with statistics and the narrative to really show what categories we should be going out to, who's a perfect person for it. Once we do that, we look into, okay, what has this company done in this space? Right. What is this in what if, if they are not doing anything in the space, what have competitors of this company been doing? Right. Like what categories, what industries are really prevalent that this company for some reason isn't in it? Right. Why why is this company not in esports, but a whole bunch of others that they compete with are? Right. And you kind of figure that out, you really craft that and you explain, hey, this is something that you really need to be a part of, X, Y, and Z. Right. Um, a lot of that has become a prevalent of it. The other part is obviously, like I said earlier, illustrating and coming up with amazing ideas that are a result of that research. I'm not just, I mean, sometimes I it pops in my brain and then I'll realize, okay, why would this work? And then do the research. But sometimes, I'll, and more often not, it's like, okay, they want to approach X amount of audience. They want to hit these guys after talking to them. Um, you know, they want to do, they want to hit this angles. What ideas could potentially hit those buckets? 
what of my current ideas that we've already done at TSM, which is more often than not, right? Why would that fit this narrative that they're going to? Um, so it's really doing research, taking a look at all the numbers and analytics and crafting the story and narrative of, and coming up with the perfect idea to help illustrate all of that. Yeah, so the research piece seems extremely mm. important. To really, I mean, you touched on earlier in this interview, but um, really getting to understand the business and also how what are you already doing can fit in, I think is a great note because then you're not doing something new and strange, maybe. Um, yeah. Just more risky in general, I'd say. But you can take something that's worked, that you know works, right? And then it's a natural extension for the brand. Absolutely. If I already put three words down, research, ideate, illustrate. Those are the three. I came that up right now. I honestly feel like a super genius. Please TM this. <laughs> Frame like, it. <laughs> frame it book it came to my yeah. head i'm gonna i'm gonna look this on google next time it's like the first that i'll think i swear right. i didn't search it my hands are free <laughs> off the keyboard but yes i would say that that's a perfect storyline to exactly my method into coming up with the best pit sales pitch with the best stuff that excites brands gotcha that's super cool so we've talked a lot about sales which i love learning about but let's talk about tsm for a second here um what does your day-to-day -day look like at tsm now that i know that you know we talked about there's work from home like is that still a thing for you guys? What does the day look like currently at TSM for you? Yeah, so it is work from home right now, but we are in the works planning to come slowly trickling. Some people are already in, some people are already out. Um, my job is a lot of meetings and a lot of emails. So I make it a goal to um, like at least hit 10 new different people a day. Um, sometimes it goes into a week, depending. Um, and then I jump into a lot of conversations through, right now it's currently like Google Meets, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, um, I say that, but I know you guys use it. So just kidding, Microsoft Teams, um, <laughs> over at Lenovo, they use it. Yep, <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, uh, so yeah, jumping into a lot of those meeting rooms and and come and, and just talking and meeting new people, having conversations, coming up with pitches, um, coming up with ideas. Um, after our baseline conversation I have with a lot of these uh, prospects and, and potential clients and partners, um, I then hit the drawing board. I sit down in front of a whiteboard, pen and paper, laptop, whatever it is, and just come up with amazing ideas that could work uh then i potentially I, a lot of it is deck building how do i illustrate that like i said putting it onto pen and paper um you know working at that uh working on that way and and illustrating through google slides or, or present any presentation that you might be doing um and then it's also working and making sure we vet out those ideas working insanely closing with our amazing partnerships team shout out partnerships team um alec best guy megan um making sure that those ideas are actionable and i get told i get scorned by them all the time that they're going like Christian stop promising all these crazy stuff I was like I just want to jump <laughs> out of space and have Wardell jump into a yacht what do you mean we can't do that working <laughs> so you know working with our our internal teams to make sure that we can do it um, and obviously working with them to come up with some cool ideas in that sense um, finishing the day playing league always yeah losing a couple and, <laughs> yes. and, and just and just crying myself to sleep until i wake up and exciting new day at tsm i work at tsm <laughs> to put up my punishment i do with losing elo <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you're in jungle main too i believe right oh yeah i'm yeah, used yeah. to the 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 why'd you miss smite i was like because yep. i'm 26 and i'm not 16. <laughs> i don't have the reaction <laughs> time <laughs> right there with you the jungle main struggle <laughs> no that's that's cool to hear even like the hybrid of um you know some work from home and some going slowly back into transition it's funny, we talked about how you and I have been working more remotely than in person these days. Um, has it been kind of weird to go back as that process is starting now? Um, yeah, I mean, I was so excited. Like, honestly, our, our facilities guy was like, dude, you're like fanboying right now. I was like, because I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, the first day I went to office was the coolest thing ever. Um, I think even when I was at the WeWork, when I, I think I told this narration on your 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 show then but I, the first day i heard somebody talking about mile flight and I heard mechanical keyboards and that was my real look mom i made it <laughs> um but it is kind of weird and it's, it takes adjusting you know it's obviously who's comfortable and and finding out hey you know one thing about work from home is we realize how efficient people can be actually and like how much they can get their stuff done and really focus on real life and make sure everything is accordingly i recently moved and i couldn't have moved like and done my job at the same time it was just really hard um, I think the next bit of it is one thing about sales is I told this narrative about the d dinner table and, and inviting clients out to really cool stuff. Um, that's something that I'm very excited for. And I think it's something that's going to be weird and getting used to and meeting people in real life, like a lot of new people. Um, but it takes adjustment. It's been weird, but getting used to it slowly. 
Yeah, I think it's funny you mentioned that for sales too. That's such a crucial piece of it, I feel like, more than maybe other roles. So yeah, uh, I'm excited for you to be able to do that too as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. What's been your proudest moment in your career so far? Do you have a moment that sticks out and you think through what you've done so far? Man, that is tough. Um, definitely my first day on the job. I think that was one of those real moments that I personally, and I, I hate to be patting myself too much or feel like I'm really cocky here, but guys, when I tell you that you know what your dream job is on that first day or in the middle of working randomly and just like, wow, like, I can't believe everything I've always wanted as a kid is, is actually, act, I have action eyes on and it's kind of here. Um, and I think, you know, that first day was a real big moment for me, I think for sure. Cause it just, or, or really when I got the call, I ran around the house about five times, maybe 10. Um, I was just super excited. Uh, but I think other from that, I think it's the, um, there was a spree of time where our sales previous sales team had either moved on or, or switched over roles. And one thing I realized is I looked up and, oh my gosh, I'm the only sales member <laughs> on this whole, this whole team. So like somebody's got to stay maintain ship. And I think it was overwhelming, but it was one of those things that I told leadership, Hey, I'm your guy. Like, you don't need to hire anyone else. Like, I am your guy. I will make sure this is there. And it wasn't one of those, you better promote me kind of things. It was like, I don't care what position I'm at. Like, I'm going to do the job and I'm going to make sure we're okay. Right. And obviously, like, there was a whole team around me. I'm not going to take credit for everything. Partnerships really stepped up. A lot of other teams helped, but we brought on a new boss. My boss, Ned, right now, he's been an incredible boss and super supportive. But I think that was a real proud moment for me where I realized, hey, like it's time for me to step up and it's time for me to speak as I walked. I've always wanted to be here. Now it's time for me to show up. Um, after that, you know, getting promoted to a global sales executive and really putting my money where my mouth is, um, I would say has been an absolute dream could true. Um, but at the same time, it only starts from here. I know where I want to go and I know there's so much more left. <laughs> I mean, I love your attitude on that, man. The fact that you felt confident enough to make that claim and then not just make it, but it sounds like live up to it based on your uh, promotion, everything else going on there. So that's awesome, man. And I can imagine why that was a proud moment because yeah. you can kind of create that challenge and achieve it. That's got to be satisfying. I, I hope so, man. I mean, I, I hope I'm living it. But I think it's one of those things that you make a lot of mistakes. I made so many. And you you just got to pick it up and learn from it and realize, okay, like what what's this learning experience? How do I move on from it? And I think that's ultimately a lot of it, what, a lot of what builds up to that pride. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so next question comes from Leroy WR. I read that as win rate. Leroy, I hope you have a good win rate on your games. He <laughs> said, uh, I, I've just hit 10K following on Twitch, averaging 200, 300 views. Nice. Should I start reaching out to orgs? Also, how should a talent market themselves? So you have any thoughts for a content creator kind of reaching out to orgs on that sales perspective almost? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I you know, there's a lot of strategy into when you're ready to go to market with and who do you go. I would say if, if you are just randomly, if you're just outreaching to new people, do it at any time you want, right? But, you know, obviously, if you have like a magic bullet that you probably want to save for the right moment that you don't want to be, you know, spend it, use this contact, and then later, like two months later, you know what I mean? Like realize you have a bigger following and now you're just annoying them. Um, but if it's an instance where you're just outreaching, let's do it. You know what I mean? My recommendation is to very similar to, well, you yourself as a streamer, you're a brand, right? Think about your identity who you are as a person, why are you any different than these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other gamers out there, right? Find a way to illustrate because one, I guarantee you a lot of those people either aren't outreaching or the fact that you're already outreaching puts you ahead and says, this is why I'm different. This is why I'm super gung ho. This is why I need to get where I want. That's one piece of it. The other is really find a way to craft your stream and make it exciting and why anyone else should join. You know what I mean? Are you super good at the game? And are you super good at one champion or one player or one character that makes sense? Yeah. Are you just super funny? You know, what jokes do you tell? You know what I mean? Simple stuff like that, crafting and working on your art, will really find the way of what brands fits to, to outreach to. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Even going back to what you said about thinking how the brand can integrate with what you're doing naturally, it, it's the same thing from a content perspective, right? Of yourself as a brand, essentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, thanks for the question, Leroy. I appreciate that. Uh, next question is, and I'm curious on this one, actually, how do you stay organized? What organizational programs, processes, or tools do you use and any advice on how to use them? So this one I'm really curious about because... I mean, you, you have so many ideas, it sounds like, and so many yeah. creative things. So there must be a way that you keep some of those organized. 
So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. I Maybe previously <laughs> I have I'm really been it, it, this is one of the skills that I developed, right? Like it's very organizational based, learning, okay, you have all these ideas, how do I put these pieces together? Um personally, I, it has been whenever an idea pops to my brain, I write it down. I have a note on, I have a file on my phone that literally has every single one, whether it's a new recipe that I'm doing for dinner or literally <laughs> what I can do for the sales pitch that might hit me at two in the morning. I don't stop. I will literally, if it's brilliant enough, like uh, excites me enough, I will actually pull over, pull over into a parking lot being safe and write it down. <laughs> um, I can't, that actually happened during F, when we were working on the FTX deal. I actually had something that sparked me um, and it was a presentation on another deal. I literally was on my way back from San Francisco to LA. I pull over to the exit. I was safe about it and I wrote it down. I spent 20 minutes and just delayed my traffic. Um, that has really helped me. The other one is uh, understanding, you know, the perfect file tree and file system for you if you're on Google Drive or your own sh share drive or whatnot um, and, and really writing it down. And the other one is piggybacking off of other people. You know what I mean? Adding their thoughts of it into it, adding highlight. This is, you know, even if you might not take it, you write it down and figure that out and you really help color code and, and organize it that way. I'm a really big outline person. So if I were to give you a, an actual like tour or a process, it would be a lot of outlines. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I can kind of relate because I also have a lot of ideas and I'm probably not as good as you as organizing those. Um, so I might have to take your, your file structure system and your note system and start using some of that because they can be hard to keep them all organized and write them down when you have them. Yeah, for sure. take inspiration. Honestly, talk to people, see how they do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's a good strategy there. Um, okay, next question. What has been your favorite memory that you made working in esports slash gaming and why is it so special to you? Does anything <sighs> stick out? Yes. There was an amazing show hosted by the wonderful Ben Green. That was the moment of, oh my gosh, I'm popular. I'm in public. Um, <laughs> honestly, it was really cool. Honestly, I will say that was just being here live is one of the coolest experiences. I'm so used to watching yeah. people and doing that, that when you're sitting on this table, it's like, oh my gosh, it's another, look, mama made it. Um, another one was playing... Um, playing league with Andy. <laughs> Actually, weirdly <laughs> enough, he called me out so much. I was so bad. But like, I think I was sitting down and I, and I heard, a, I was watching TV. I was after a losing streak and I got a ping on my League of Legends account and I was like, oh, I'll look at it later. I was like, all right, I'll see. And then I see it's from like, you know, one of the execs up there and then I log on and it's Andy. I thought that was the coolest thing ever just because he was one of my biggest heroes growing up um, and being able to play with him was a really cool moment. Um, other ones is probably, you know, cl uh, closing some big deals. Um, when we heard that FTX announced it, I was, whew, that was really cool. It was <laughs> honest. It was like, it may, I, I, to give you context, I worked every day of April, every day of March, the whole team did, not just me. And so when we found out, all of us were just so excited um, from a sales angle. It's whenever you close a really cool deal. Um, I'm, you know, working on a couple of things that are on my own and even closing solo deals. Like I, I still very green boots and still early, but those are awesome feelings for sure. Um, and then I think I like to echo the first day. Um, that was a really big, 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 big moment that I'll always remember my life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all those sound pretty big, especially the, the deals must be so satisfying because I'm sure that it takes so long to actually you know, mm -hmm. get to that point where you're closing. So it must be very exciting when that happens, but also playing with Reggie. I mean, I would say that would cool. be pretty fun if I get that chance too. So I had the yeah. honor to get carried by it, by Reggie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. And our, our final question comes from Keeg who asks, what's your worst mistake that you've made at your job? And this is clarified by make sure to answer something you feel comfortable with. So <laughs> what's the worst mistake you can share that you've made? Ah, uh, man, I have made a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but I think, you know, not to give up too much was communication. Um, I think the more responsibility that I kind of got on, the more I realized like, hey, I'm becoming the uh, the person that needs to be able to attach multiple teams and make sure everyone's communicated. And if I don't have my things together, then all of a sudden nothing's being communicated correctly and there's going to be a loss in translation. Um, so I don't want to give away too much, but honestly, I think there's definitely been moments that are learning experience where I feel like I could have done a better job. Um, I'm really trying my best to work on my communication skills and making sure I'm not rambling. I say this after rambling for literally an hour, but like, I think that's something that I really pride myself into, or I'm really pushing myself to get better in. You know what I mean? Making sure I get all the information and be able to clarify it as, as, as clearly as possible, especially when you, when you're on sales, when you're working with partners who don't know TSM. 
right? Like they're, your, your job is to educate them. Your job is to explain what your asset is and what you do. And if you're not explaining it properly, then it's not going to be sold. Internally, it's the same thing, right? If, if, if I need to find a way to get this done or figure out like how, you know, this idea comes to life, I need to be able to communicate my idea properly so that the, the right yes or no's are actually indeed correct. Um, you know, I think there were definitely times where I feel like it might have been the end of the world, but maybe I was just being too hard on myself. Um, but I think I've definitely learned from it and realized, okay, I didn't, I didn't say this properly. How can I cut my words down? And I'm still learning. Um, and I, and I, 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 I've been testing my, you know, coworkers and boss to call me out on it. Christian, you're, you don't make any sense. Thank you. Like, honestly, I love that. I love when they call me out on that because it's like, okay, now I know it's definitely like, I've known through all these series of people I talk to, it's me, right? It's not, I, you know, I'm not blaming anyone else, right? So taken from that, learning from that, realize how do I come up with more clear answers? Yeah. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it's like you said before, just a matter of I think practicing and getting used to that because it is such a valuable skill to have, right? To be mm -hmm. able to actually explain and tell that story. Uh, but I'm sure trying to make it concise can be a challenge sometimes and learning how to say just the right amount of words in, in the best way is an ongoing process. It's like you never quite get there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you're always improving on that. And I think that makes Absolutely. a lot of sense just hearing that. Awesome, man. So uh, I think that's our last question for today, guys. So thanks everyone who came out and watched the stream and thanks to everyone who asked questions in the Discord. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Christian, thank you so much for coming on as well and for being on here. I'd love talking to you again, man. I'll have to do that again sometime and maybe play some league as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Last time was in our in-house, man. We got to, well, one, we got to get more <laughs> of those in so that you can join us. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. And and final note here is really, hey, if you want to be in sales, if you want to be in esports, reach out, please. I love talking, as you can tell. Like, shoot me a message on LinkedIn. Uh, my Twitter, I don't really use Twitter as much. Maybe use like Instagram, which is the same, homie Sealy, um, if you want to do it that way or whatever it is. But LinkedIn, find me, you know, I'm happy to continue talking to this into a more personal environment. Yeah, I mean, he told you guys how much he reached out to other people. So you can take his advice and reach out to him now. That's how that works. I think it goes both ways. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, guys, our next episode will be September 15th at 5 p.m. PST. And that's with special guest Joe Marine. I love that name. I'm jealous of that name. I love um, that guy. He's really yeah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> mobile team manager at TSM FTX. So that's the 15th. Make sure you don't miss that one. And uh, make sure to follow the channel and join the Discord so that you actually can know when we're going to be live and also join the event for that one. So I think that's it for this week. See you guys soon. And thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you. We'll see you awesome. later. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye.